What is up, friends? Uh, we are gonna talk about cinematic tips today. I wanna give you as many as I can, well, 10 in the shortest amount of time. And I first wanna say that the word cinematic is probably the most overused term on YouTube. I'm guilty of using it all the time. The most important thing when you're trying to create cinematic footage is that you have good actors or actresses that have a good performance, a really good location, and a good story. So if you have those, then these tips will help. These tips won't magically make your footage way better, although they will help, but you ultimately need those first three things. These are things that I use every day, every week as a director and cinematographer. So I hope they help. Let's begin. So the number one tip for making your footage more cinematic is backlight your footage. Not only does it give you a beautiful rim light and it makes your character stand out, but it gives you really cool shadows. So make sure you're pointing your camera towards the light. This is the most important tip as a cinematographer I could give anyone, point your camera towards the light. Second tip is add camera movement. If you're gonna have a locked off shot, if your shot's not gonna have any movement, make sure it's as nice as a photo. Otherwise, camera movement can make a boring location, such as this, seem more interesting. You're adding more information to your viewer's eyes. It's why I'm always shooting handheld. So add movement whenever possible. And thirdly, Throw out your zoom lenses. Uh, don't actually throw them out. Just put them on the shelf and get used to shooting on prime lenses. Your zoom lenses make things look more boring. They're infinite depth of field. An infinite depth of field is only good if you have an interesting background and half the time you don't have an interesting background. So get used to shooting primes. All you need is a 24 mil and a 50 mil for maybe the first 50 years of your career. Honestly, those are the only two lenses I often use. Also too, people complain that without a zoom lens, you can't zoom in onto the person, but you have these great things called feet where you can walk towards your subject and get a closer shot if you're locked off on a prime. So get used to primes, they're way nicer than zooms. I just wanna say one thing though, mad respect to zoom lenses. I've shot entire movies on just a single zoom lens. I love you zoom lenses, but I've moved on to primes. Fourth tip. Softer light is closer light. The closer you are to a light, the softer the light will get. Whereas back here, the light's not as soft. It gets a bit more harsh and doesn't wrap. But if we go back to the light, you can see it's nice and soft. So get big light sources close to your subject and you'll get softer light, which usually is more cinematic. It's what more people prefer because it makes people look nicer. Next tip is film the shadow side of someone's face. Don't film the side where all the light's coming from because it's flat, it's boring, and ends up looking like a makeup tutorial, which there's nothing wrong with those. But if you're trying to go more cinematic, if you film the shadow side, the side where the shadows are, not where the brightest light is coming from, you're gonna get more shadows, more contour. It's much more interesting. Film the shadow side. Number six is let it flare. Flares are your friend. It's nice when you actually let the light wash over the lens. It's interesting, it's unique. It's not something that we see happen in our eyes every day. Cinematic footage is supposed to be larger than life. So let it flare, enjoy those flares. You don't have to avoid them. I love pointing my camera towards the light because you get beautiful footage. Let it flare. Next, get a top handle. If you don't have one of these right now on your camera, stop this video, go get one. Get a top handle for your mirrorless camera or your cinema camera. You see, everything in life has handles. Your laptop bag, your grocery bags, your luggage, because gravity works for you when you're holding a handle. It keeps things stable and it's much easier to travel. I never get a camera without a top handle. I can't believe I see people sitting there struggling, shaking their muscles, holding the camera from the side. You're gonna improve your footage if you have a top handle. If there's one tip you take from this video today, backlight and a top handle. Next, foreground is your friend. I love putting glass and other pieces of material in front of my lens. It makes it more interesting. You get flares and all sorts of light stuff. Shoot through trees, shoot through anything. Just get some stuff in front of the lens if you're finding your shot is boring. Foreground objects, blurred bokeh in the foreground is your friend. It can help a very boring shot. My second last tip is think about adding haze to indoor locations. Haze adds depth to your scene, it adds beamage, that's where you can see the light beams coming out, it makes boring rooms much more interesting. You can see through this scene in the kitchen, we added haze and it ends up being a much more cool shot. So consider adding haze indoors. Last tip. Consider switching up your shutter angle for high action sequences. So if it's not just someone talking to frame like right now, if they're frantically running or doing something athletic, consider using a sharper shutter angle or a higher shutter speed. This will increase the action and it makes the footage seem a bit more aggressive, a bit more kinetic for that action and enhances the action. It can take something that's pretty normal and make it a little, a little more exciting. So 
There's all the tips, guys. I hope that helped. I wanted to give you guys just kind of the baseline cinematic tips that I use for everything. This is stuff that I use every week on all of the documentaries and commercials that I work on. They're real life tips and I tried to keep them inexpensive for you guys. I'll see you guys on the next video. Kim, what were you just saying our audience is called? The boners. The, that's what Mark the fan, called. The, the subscribers. Fans, the boners. The boners. The boners. <laughs> it's either that or uh, markers or boneheads, whatever you guys want to call yourselves.